Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Hope you've had a good day. Welcome to this Instagram live with the junior doctor, Dr. Esgi. A lot of you guys will know her already. I'm just going to add Esgi in. I just sent a request. Oh, fantastic. Hi, Esgi. How are you? I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm not too bad, thanks. Good. How's your day? It's been all right, pretty slow. Been at home today by ourselves, actually, because my husband went into work. Um, okay. So, yeah, it was, it was quite busy. Good, 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 good. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, no, a, lot of, a lot of you guys know, uh, a lot of you guys will know Esgi, also known as the junior doctor, blogger, YouTuber. Does some amazing content, actually. Some really good content, some original stuff. Um, and clearly people like you and they watch your stuff and, and you're building you know, quite a bit of a following, I think. But yeah. for, for those of you who don't know Esgi, let's hear a bit about your story. What, when, when did it all begin? Med school, F1, F2? Yeah, so um, I had a, like a quite long winded journey into medicine. Um, I failed to get in twice, so I ended up doing a whole other degree before I applied oh, wow. to get the third time. Um, and then so I ended up doing medicine as a graduate student at UCL. Okay. So I completed my um, medical degree in 2017 and then I worked as an F1, F2 in North London um, and then I liked the hospital so much that I went back there for GP training and so okay. I'm a GP trainee um, but I'm on maternity leave at home and I'm going back to work in four weeks actually. Oh um, wow. So that's why, it, yeah, it's going to be um, a big How adaptation for me. Yeah, how's how's so four weeks? Are you kind of down the days? Are you nervous? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I mean, at first it just felt like ages away, but now it's just like become so real. One uh, one side of me is looking forward to it because I'm sort of um, looking forward to that routine and sort of getting back into work and um, obviously like the financial side and everything as well. And yeah, yeah. um, being on maternity leave, you get <laughs> you get nothing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, on the other hand, I'm, I'm obviously, I've never been away from like my Doella for more than a few hours. So it's going to be wow. interesting to see how it goes. But, wow. Yeah. And, and, and your daughter's how old? You said it was eight, was it eight she, months? So she's 10 months now. 10 so months. Okay. Back, she'll be 11. So she's, she's going to be like, you know, she's quite a bit older. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be a big change for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I remember when when my wife went back after our first and it was it was a mix of anticipation but a bit of excitement to get back into mm. kind of the working world and 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 yeah I can imagine you're going through all of those feelings right now but yeah. you've done really well to to keep up with all the stuff that you do on the side so all the vlogging and all of the, the posts and the videos how has yeah. it been doing that in maternity as per doing it pre-maternity when you didn't have a little one so yeah, um, it, it, so it's different. Obviously, the content I make is a lot different now because I'm at home and there's there's a lot of less like work content, which I think a lot of people appreciate on my on my yeah. channel. Um, I've had more time, obviously, to do it now that she's in a better routine and that kind of stuff. So um, I feel like I'm dedicating more time to it. And when I go back now, I'm sure I'll get all of the work vlogs out that everyone's looking yeah. forward to. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I started off the channel when I first finished. So. I was so what I did was I, I was coming back from my elective I was in the airport and um, I basically just reflected back on like all my struggles and I, I was just like wow I finally got to this point and I finished medical school after all yeah. this getting in and so I was having a chat with my um, husband then he was my fiance um, and we were like you know we should just document this somehow like you know video recording or something and so we came up with the idea of doing YouTube yeah. Um, and I put my first video up, which I've now privated because it's so cringe. <laughs> I can't watch it myself. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. I just wanted to inspire other people that, you know, even though if you find it difficult, um, like you you can do it at, in, at the end of the day sort of thing. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how it all started. So this is when, this is after elective. So when would that have been? When was video number one? So when I finished medical school, but I hadn't, started in the fy1 yet so it's okay just in that sort of summer period so how many years are we talking we're talking four, did you have four years okay so yeah, you did med school f1 f2 and then and now F2 straight one. into gp yeah okay okay so <laughs> but why did you cover that video we should keep it open it's, i don't know it, it's so cringe like i just <laughs> i can't i can't talk properly and what i'm saying is just so boring it is <laughs> 
maybe i'll release it in like a few more years time when i like have a laugh about it or something yeah well look you've not deleted it that means it's coming back at some point no, no it's definitely yeah. still there I haven't <laughs> <laughs> that, that reminds me of myself because we we did our first video um well, several years ago now and we've hidden the first one because yeah you look back and think oh why was i saying some of the things that i was saying because you, you, yeah. you're naive when you start these things off right and it'd be good to to know a little bit about how you got more comfortable and how your journey was with the yeah. whole YouTubing side of things because there's a lot of doctors now who are doing stuff on not just YouTube but, but Insta and TikTok and, and, and all over mm -hmm. the place so we'll talk a little bit maybe about perceptions of doctors who do that and, and whether you had any kind of negative comeback um, yeah. and all those kind of things which, which go with the, the the kind of being in the public eye I suppose yeah. um, so you did your first video and, and obviously you, you didn't I presume at that point you hadn't planned that you'd be doing it in four years and have X number of videos out on the channel. No, I was just going to just see how it goes. And, you know, when I got my first view, I got so excited. But then I realized <laughs> it was just me who refreshed the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then when I got my first subscriber as well, so it all kind of just escalated from there. But um, yeah. I was just going to basically just see how it goes. If it didn't sort of pick up, I was just going to leave it. And it was just a project yeah. I tried out. But then I'm lucky enough that like, it's been slow, but um, yeah, it has sort of been going up in numbers over the years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's certainly worth having a look. And and the YouTube channel itself is that called the Junior Doctor as well? Yeah, so it's called the Junior Doctor. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do when I qualify as a GP because I won't be a Junior Doctor anymore. <laughs> I'll have to come up with ideas for new names, but still a while for that. And you, you, you can't change it, can you? Because people know you as they know you, and yeah. um, when you change names, it you kind of lose a little bit of that that brand and that that identity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we went through a similar process where we changed names and, and people knew us for something else and then had to kind of adjust. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I think maybe I just stuck to the same name as it was originally because people get to know that, don't you? And they know you as yeah. the junior doctor and they've seen your journey as well. And, and, and there's, there's a difference between making videos for, say, educational content, but then vlogging and documenting a journey. So mm -hmm. most of your content seems to be you documenting your journey. And I guess early on, it was all your kind of early medical um years at work and now obviously it's changed a little bit with with family and stuff coming on um but what were the first kind of videos all about then so you, you did the one post elective and then were you doing it as you started work and kind of telling people this is how i found it were you just open about how the whole process was um so i first started off doing like videos on how i got into medical school how i revised for the entrance exams that kind of stuff so i got those contents that those kind of types of content out to basically encourage anyone to start their journey if they're thinking about it and then I started to do um the really early days of going to work so like my first day in induction like Black Wednesday when we were first starting and at that time it was more of like documenting it for me and even now when I watch back it just feels so weird to see like how young I looked and like you know how excited I was about my first day and that sort of yeah. stuff and I didn't tell anybody so no one knew I was doing YouTube apart from my sister and my husband okay um, yeah and then so when I had the first person come up to me being like oh I came across your YouTube channel I was mortified I was really embarrassed <laughs> but then after a while I got used to the idea and I sort of just told everyone yeah yeah then, so yeah so the channel's been like a mixture of work vlogs and home vlogs so like work day in the life of a doctor and then home in the life and then just like um sort of other videos in between about medical school like failing to get into medical school and like yeah. just advice and like question and answer sessions because people just want to know like how much we get paid and just those kind of answers you can't always find online yeah and, and just just showing the real side of what it is to be a, a junior doc, right? The ups, the downs, yeah. the challenges. A lot of stuff on, on social these days is all kind of put up there as if everything is perfect. And, That's and, the um, thing. And yeah, whereas actually... You watch like dramas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Glamorise the whole profession. Yeah, and people see, I, I think certainly other doctors and med students just see through it, don't they? There's so much of that yeah. stuff out there. But, but the real stuff that they want to watch is, is the ups and downs and, and the truthness and the rawness. And some of the videos that I've seen kind of cover that angle, which mm. is why I think people have, uh, have resonated it with, with quite a lot. And you mentioned people recognize you. So is that happening now more on a regular basis when you, when you go, has anyone, like any of your seniors or your, or your, your regs when you're younger recognize you? So my, so the people, so the SHOs, so the people like um, on my level kind of have seen my video and I'm, I'm not sure if it's like circulated on some whatsapp um yeah 
never been yeah. on or something. So they all know. Um, I haven't been out very much, so I've not had anyone recently sort of recognize me. The last time someone recognized me is when just two weeks before lockdown, um, I did the stupid thing where I went out clubbing, pregnant. And okay. um, I, someone tapped me on the shoulder on the dance floor and was like, oh my God, are you the junior doctor on YouTube? Oh, wow. um, and we were both just dancing and I was like, yeah, that's me. And we just had a little chat and I just found that really funny, just like really random. Yeah, um, yeah. So I get like those kind of things like here and there, but I'm not like really well known. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but it's nice when you get that because you realise you're making an impact and what you've yeah. done has been enough for someone to, to, to A, watch a significant amount of that to know it's you um, yeah. and then to, to resonate with it in some way that they want to come and say hello which is which yeah. is testimony to the videos that you're making which is great and and um what about like have you had any negative perceptions have, has anyone kind of said look why are you doing that and why are you putting so much out there and shouldn't you be a bit more careful you're a medic like does that kind of stuff come to you now at the beginning or, or anywhere in between um so i haven't had luckily anyone so i've had people being um rude just personally towards me calling me names and that kind of stuff which i like comes with the whole being on social media and that's totally fine luckily i've ha not had anyone have issues with the p content i produce because i'm very careful to like ensure there's patient confidentiality and yeah. i'm not like recording myself whilst i'm taking time out of i'm not delaying a job and then yeah. recording myself i'm sort of doing it on my break times or like if i'm on a night shift i've got some downtime that kind of stuff yeah. Um, I did have this one occasion where um, I had a vlog that had a colleague's signature um, in the background somewhere. So I got an, I got a consultant saying that that had been flagged up to him somehow. Okay, wow. Well. <laughs> and then he told Gosh. me to um, put the video down. So that's one that I privated and deleted um, straight yeah. away. So that was the only one occasion that one time um, a colleague's confidentiality, I guess, was like broken. Yeah. Um, but yeah because I'm quite careful I'm, I'm lucky that I haven't run into such issues and you learn from that stuff right sometimes these things I guess have to happen for you to realize okay gosh you know people do notice these things and yeah maybe I need to notice these things and and, and, and I think a lot of people who go into particularly the medical side of videos probably mm. have that kind of thing happen at some point even though people know the rules and they read it all and they know all the social media guidance etc yeah. um, it's so easy to to just see something slip past, isn't it? And, and, and get into a video that you'd never notice, but someone else is going to pick up straight away. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but it but it did put you off, which is good. Because a lot yeah, of people, when they, did, when they get I, up... Yeah, I was where, quite careful since then. And I did get put off from doing work vlogs after that, just in case, you know, I run into any, any other issues after that. Um, but then, yeah, I just sort of picked it back up again and then yeah, carried on. Yeah. And, but the thing that you said is really important there is it, it doesn't get in the way of the job and and and, mm -hmm. and you know obviously youtube now is 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 getting bigger and bigger and lots of people are jumping on the the medical video bandwagon in terms of vlogging um mm -hmm. and i do wonder sometimes if you know there is the stuff that's it's getting in the way of their normal day-to-day -day stuff because there's just so yeah. much content in one shift and you think well surely like you know how get time to make all of this yeah plus edit etc but um yeah. but it sounds like you, you you've got it the other way around where yeah no, you know, you know what your prime goal your prime aim is yeah i never set up my day in a way where i change anything to vlog or record anything in that day it's it's just basically like if i have some downtime i'll take out my camera which is my phone um, yeah. and i'll just like talk to it and if i've got any like cases that i've just seen from amy for example and I'll talk through them, but I don't ever do that whilst I'm in the middle of something and, like you said, take it up um, yeah, from yeah. my like time away from my patient sort of thing. Yeah. And and what about stuff like you, you mentioned cases there? How do you, I suppose, how much have you paid attention to make sure that there's nothing that you say that can somehow get back to yeah. identify somebody? And is that something that has changed as you're, you've developed into your blogging? Um, we've got more experience and more aware of it. Yeah, I think it's a bit more of the experience. So initially I was keeping the, my place of work um, quite like not secretive, but I wasn't very open about where I was working um, for that reason as well. And just, I did, I don't know, I just didn't think people should know. Yeah. Um, and then I was very careful in not sort of disclosing anything it's like age, even just age, ethnicity, yeah. and yeah. the specific problems they come with. Like say if I've had um, a patient come into A&E, the most I'll say is someone came in with bleeding and pregnancy sort of thing. 
and yeah. um, so nothing identifiable and I'm quite and I, I I use that presentation to sort of talk about the case rather than the case sort of thing yeah. um, so very careful not to give anything away as to who the patient could be because even if the patient was to watch the vlog and know maybe it was that day that they came sort of thing maybe they saw me um, even they won't be able to identify that it was themselves that I was talking about yeah. in the video. And you get and you get better at that, don't you? And you find and, it, and you find ways of making it easier to do that um, mm. as you go on. And we used to do this with with GP trainees who used to come to me with queries and doubts about exams. And I'd make a video and say, "Look, I spoke to a trainee today." And you know, initially I was thinking, "Okay, mate, could they be identifiable by their friends, for example?" Whereas now you get used to doing it in a way that's completely random, but mm. still helps somebody on the other side who's watching yeah. um, to get some value from it. I guess because it's one thing to make content, but you've got to make sure the other side is getting value, isn't it? Yeah. Whether that's, whether that's just seeing your experience and saying, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing in a year and it's good to see what's happening mm. or education, regarding, you know, depending on what you're doing, what the video is all about. But, yeah. but value is key. And how do you make sure that you keep making videos that people want, need, um, and are going to watch from beginning to end because a lot of people can click on a video and are off within five seconds? yeah exactly no the i think the biggest drive to doing these is when i get messages about like saying how you know watching something has inspired them or finally made the decision to i don't know do graduate medicine or something and just those sort of um comments from people really do like push you to do more of these sorts of stuff because yeah. when you do get the negative comments it kind of um you kind of lose sense of why you started this journey and this youtube and everything um, but when you get messages like that, it really gives you the push to carry on. Yeah, the, the, the messages of thanks are, are something that drives a lot of people, isn't it? When you mm -hmm. when you do this kind of thing, um, which is really good. And and you've done so. You just when you came in internity, what job were you doing in SC one? So I was doing respiratory medicine. Okay, okay. Um, just before I left, and then now when I go back, I'll be going on to psychiatry. Okay, so you've not done a you've done a GP rotation, I guess in F two. Yeah, so yeah. that was the last rotation of F2. And I'd got okay. my GP job at that point, so I was really Okay, it. okay. Uh, and, and and how, what sort of content were you creating when you were doing, that? did you create content when you were in F2 in, in general practice? Yeah. And yeah. what kind of content were you doing there that differs from, from the hospital stuff that you were doing, say in night shifts, for example? Yeah, it was more focused on my routine of the day rather than the hospital stuff was about the things I did and people wanted to see like the wards and the hospital corridors and that sort of stuff. Whereas my GP was more focused on my structure of the day. So, yeah. for example, being a foundation doctor, I didn't have as much responsibility as the salary GPs, for example. And um, so I had like a four hour lunch break and I'd be going to the gym, doing my like food shop and everything, bring chicken and put it in the GP like yeah. um, fridge before I got to take it home, that sort of stuff. So I'm just showing like the structure of the day. Um, and then I'd share my frustrations about the job as well. So I had at the time I had things like half, I had half hour slots to see patients. And so if I had two patients who, who like back to back didn't come or didn't cancel their appointments, I'd have like a whole hour where I wasn't doing anything. So yeah. I'd sort of talk about that and my experiences around that and how frustrating it was and sort of just like add an educational touch to it and just see, you know, behind the doors how important it is to let your GP practice know, for example, that you weren't going to come in for your appointment because it does make a big difference to yeah, yeah. how everyone works. Yeah. So, um, and, and you raise a good point there because your perception of general practice, a lot of people don't know about general practice and they're kind of at that stage. And I guess a lot of your followers are, are med students and F1s, F2s who may not have decided what they want to do and mm -hmm. general practice might be in their mind but they may not know what it's all about and therefore it's a big responsibility in a way isn't it because you're you know they, this may be one of the few insights they have into general practice yeah. so what you say could hugely influence what they do in the future and not just your GP job but all the other stuff that you do as well yeah. um, and that comes with responsibility right? Yeah, no, exactly. I think as, as well, because not every foundation doctor ends up having a GP rotation. So yeah. in that exposure somewhere or another is quite helpful. Yeah, yeah. And and do you do GP this year as ST1 or do you do it again in ST2? So once I do psych, I would have had all of my hospital placements out the way, which is nice. Okay. I have that one big chunk of hospital medicine done. And then so my next half will be 18 months equivalent of GP. Okay. Um, it was meant to be the other way around, but then just because of timing with maternity leave, it ended up being yeah. that way. So you're going to do a lot more content when you're in your GP rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so good stuff. 
<laughs> good and 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 do you are you conscious of the fact that you're making it this content and a lot of medics are watching but there are going to be some non-medics who are going to watch that inevitably as your channel grows followers mm. come from all from all areas so are you planning to make or do you make a lot of content for non-medics as well um, yeah. or are you are you purely focused on one niche so even with my medical content if there is anything um that is like medical jargon then i do try to explain it so even a non-medic can watch it and just really enjoy sort of behind the scenes of what a doctor does yeah um, i have experimented a little bit with doing sort of home blogs and like other unrelated videos um that like are totally unrelated to medicine sort of like weight loss kind of stuff and uh, from the vibe that i picked up from my channel is that I don't know, my audience base isn't that interested in it, but obviously with the way that my life is going now that I'm a mum and everything, I'll try to incorporate that a little bit. Mm. So I'll probably do sort of subtle changes here and there um, to incorporate other types of viewers into um, my audience as well, but we'll see. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to do that, isn't it? When you, when you know you've got a type of video that works, that resonates with people that they love, to then have that confidence to actually try something a little bit different yeah. Um, is not something that everybody does. Some, a lot of people just find a formula and they just roll with it until they max it out. Yeah. Well, it's actually to, you're doing you, right? So you're doing you whether you're at work or you're at home. Um, mm. and, and it's hard for some people to, to do that because they, they, they follow what they know works. Yeah. Um, and they don't want to take that risk that, oh, what if I do a video and it doesn't go down very well? Are people going to stop watching me? So yeah. it's really good that you're doing the variety of stuff that you're doing. Yeah, I try to keep, so I, I try to keep saying, obviously being on maternity leave means I can experiment a little bit more with my channel, yeah. um, but we'll see what happens when I go back to work. And I think, yeah, I think, because I've had like a long 12 months now where I haven't had any work related sort of vlogs and day in the life sort of thing. Yeah. I think people are waiting for that now. Yeah. And are you getting requests? I guess you get a lot of requests to do ty different types of videos. Um, yeah. So... Uh, I, do, I have people I've had people messaging me saying you know they're bored of my sit down videos now and they want okay. like more day in the lives but they're just gonna have to wait until I go back to work so we'll see oh what, what's the weirdest request you've had for a video um not anything weird but I've had lots and lots of people interested about my GCSEs and my A levels every okay. time I do and a, I'll always have at least 10 people be like what did you get for your GCSEs and A-levels and I keep telling them that it's been over 10 years maybe 15 years I've done them now and it has mm. zero relevance to like now and you know the the gradings now and everything yeah, yeah and so yeah. there is this weird obsession with what I got I don't know if people are thinking like I I, I was like a fraudulent and I don't yeah. let's get into medical school <laughs> or something but I might just do a video like that just to get it out there and be like look guys yeah. this is what I got from my GCSEs and a yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, if there's that many requests, then you've got to do it, right, at some point. Yeah. Exactly. Doing it more. And also, I guess, when people do get to know you, um, people like to know journeys, don't they? And, and that's just something that people do. So they'll know you from a certain point onwards. But I guess they want to fill in the gaps. And that's probably yeah. why these requests come in. And, um, and, and, and I think when you do get more and more known, then certainly that is a big thing that people want to know. Like, where did they come from? And what yeah. was their story? And, you know... Am I in the same position as, as she was when she was, I don't know, 14, 15, for example, at school? Like that kind of stuff, I guess, probably comes to their mind. And that's maybe why it comes. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'll have to do a journey into the loft and dig out my old yeah, journey in the past. <laughs> certificates and see, because I actually don't remember what I got, for example, from my GCSE. <laughs> yeah, was someone saying really nosy. Thanks for all the comments, by the way, guys. We have, I have missed a few come through. But thank you for all the people who are on board and watching. Um, it looks like you've got a lot of people who are wa will watch your videos, which is great. And, and hopefully they get a lot of value from it as well. Yeah. Um, so, you, so we talked about YouTube. Um, two things I want to touch upon. I want to touch upon other channels. And I want to touch upon the whole influencer scene because there's a lot of um, stuff going around about medics and being influencers and putting out content that maybe they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. um, companies approaching them and, and, and asking for, for stuff. How, has that happened much? Have you had a lot of um, companies come at you and say, can you, can you do stuff for us? And, mm. and does that happen quite a bit? And has that happened more recently, do you think? And how do you balance I those? those feel, yeah, I feel like with my, my channel sort of really growing in the past year, I've had a lot more of this, particularly um, non-UK based companies reaching out to me. Um, but I felt that they're all things that I can't advocate for. So things like slimming teas and weight loss teas, um, energy drinks for like concentration while revising, 
um, I've had other things. Um, I've had teeth whitening, and when you look into it, the the dose of whitening that they have is not legal in the UK, but they're asking wow. me to sort of advertise wow. it. And like with this energy drink, there was an ingredient in there that was not licensed in the UK, but they're asking me to advertise it here, sort of thing. So I have to really, really read into it. And I don't, if if I don't feel like I can share it, if I don't like like it myself, and I I can't, I don't feel like I can share it with my viewers to be like, look, guys, I tried out this product and I actually really enjoy it. Give it a go as well, if you like. If I can't say that, then I just I won't be able to accept um and when i get those sorts of you know requests about teas and drinks and teeth whitening and that kind of stuff i'm always a bit cautious and i've never really i don't think it's worth taking that risk because we sort of the people who are on social media i feel like kind of represent a profession and you have to keep professional even though you're away from work and you're on social media so yeah. for me that's really important that i don't break sort of public trust and advertise something when it's one illegal and two isn't there's no evidence for it yeah 100 percent. i mean being a clinician again that responsibility is huge isn't it and mm. you say one one thing that's not right and it and it can do a lot of damage so that research is 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 super important um yeah. and and i can and, and i guess it's an easy target isn't it let's 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 find somebody who's got loads of people to look at and you know we've done this we've actually looked at our audiobook so hopefully you know, I've, I've done the same thing, but hopefully it's not like a, a product where you have to worry about safety and efficacy and no. legalities and things like that. No, with with everyone, with anyone who sort of sends me um, a like product request or something, I always say, look, I'll, let, I'll allow you to send it to me if you want to, but know that I will never advertise it if I don't agree with the product. If you're happy with that, then you can send it to me and usually they do. With the audiobook, it was completely different because I'm actually revising for my AKT and it was like a massive, yeah. massive help for me. And I appreciate it a lot more now that I'm getting like the knowledge content out of the way and listening to the audiobook like really makes sense now, whereas I kind of was doing it the other way around. And Good. it wasn't really working. Good. But yeah, no, yeah. No, no. well, some people learn by audio, some people don't. It's one of those yeah. things that, and we that's why we try and make content in different styles to match different mm -hmm. people. But yeah. Um, but again, I'm glad you're getting some, some value. But what about other streams then? Because obviously you, you're big on YouTube, you're, you're Instagram, I guess, started after YouTube. And are other channels that or do you focus mainly on YouTube and Insta or do you, are there others that you push on as well? As in other social media channels? So no, I have, I think I have like a Facebook page just automatically open through my Instagram. And I, I don't post anything on there. I just physically okay. don't have the time. I barely keep up with Instagram. Yeah. And I keep up with just, you know, getting my YouTube videos out. But I really don't have enough time for anything else. Um, I do do other things sort of outside of medicine, things like aesthetics and stuff. But that's completely different from social media. Yeah. So the, so the, so the focus is mainly YouTube and Insta going forward. Yeah. 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 And you not jumped on the TikTok bag. Sorry, yeah. You know, I jumped on the TikTok bandwagon. A lot of doctors are, are jumping on there. We're, we're trying it. I'm, I'm really tempted to, but I know that if, if that is one other platform that I join, it's just, I'm really, really bad at just scrolling for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And I try to get out of that habit for Instagram. So if I have like another platform that I can do that with, I'll just be stuck to my phone for 24 hours a yeah. day. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's about knowing yeah and also sometimes dilution is a factor isn't it the more the more channels you try and hit yeah um, and we certainly found this out we, we, we try and teach on every single channel out there but certainly it takes four five six seven eight times the amount of work and time and effort to cover two or three different channels four or five different channels together so i think having two seems to be working really well for you and you and you're and you're putting out quality content on both as well mm -hmm. and different content on both obviously and you know sometimes you'll see someone on four channels put the same thing out on four channels. Mm. But actually, as you probably realize, Insta is a very different world to, to YouTube. You could just upload all your YouTube videos on Insta, but it probably wouldn't have the same effect. No, yeah, I think knowing each platform and what you can use them for is really important. And you, what you said about using other platforms, I didn't want to just open another account if I can't really give like my 100% to it and really grow it and you know yeah. add, add value to somebody who's going to come across my posts sort of thing. Mm. Um, so my YouTube is more about like work and medical school and then my Instagram is more like my life in the background and like my family life and so like pictures of like Ella, my daughter and, and that yeah. kind of stuff yeah. and just stories about what I get up to in the day. So that's how I try to sort of balance the two. Yeah. And sometimes people think, why, why do people even want to watch this? But they do. <laughs> 
they do and it... some of the some of the videos i've recorded i'm like oh like for example i had a video lots of people uh, international medical graduates asking me so many questions on all of my videos and one of the doctors at work suggested look just do a video about how to gain your gmc license in the uk uh, as an international graduate um, and just you know redirect people to that video if they have any questions and i was like i'm going to do it but nobody's really going to be interested and then it sort of was like the most watched video on my channel. So I was really surprised yeah. about the types of videos you think aren't going to do well, just really hit. And the other ones you really put time and effort into and think it's going to be a hit, just fail. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know that. I know that world. The yeah. video you think, okay, this is awesome. It's like one of the best ones ever. And no one yeah. And then the one that you just like in the corner, you're hidden away, they just it suddenly blows up. Yeah. So I know, I know you mean, it's hard to predict what people want and what they need isn't it because everyone needs a different and we might think that this is what they need but actually mm -hmm. they're telling you in the questions and the comments that we want this yeah um it's all about the again. algorithm as well though yeah 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 absolutely right. and, and, and 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 i guess you've learned a lot about how youtube works and how to you know there's all the technical stuff like yes there's making the video and there's editing as well but there's also mm -hmm. getting the thumbnail right there's also getting the keywords right there's also you know, targeting things properly and I guess that's something that you've picked up more and more experience over the years yeah no definitely looking at my old thumbnails um, yeah. and then comparing them to now definitely <laughs> yeah yeah no it's really really good what you what you're doing is there any particular video that you think stands out as your favorite video either because of the way you recorded it or because of watching it back um so one of my favorite ones is my first day at work I just feel like it's just really I just look so timid and youthful and just seeing how much I've changed and like my confidence just just walking around at work you know um like I just I can just see how I was really shy and I would, I'd always be that kind of person who like vlogs in the toilet but now yeah. I was, now I vlog like in the staff room and if anyone walks in there it's fine sort of thing it's so fine yeah, yeah 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 um and then so this is f1 you mean this is when you're, your first ever day yeah. as an f1 yeah yeah black okay, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's there and then um the most other recent ones are like just looking at my night shifts and and sort of that sort of stuff before mat leave just to see and also before the pandemic um just to see like what life was just like because it's really weird for example even now when we sit down and watch like tv series and they have scenes in like the pub and a yeah. cafe and i was just yeah. telling my husband like don't you just miss like going out for a walk and just yeah. being able to you know freely touch things and go into the shops and just grab a cup of coffee and meet your friends in the park just like the yeah. really basic things yeah. so looking back at my vlogs to see what life was like before the pandemic is kind of like quite quite nice well that, that i mean that's super important because you know in 10 years time 15 years time when everyone's forgotten about their f1 year or mm. f2 year and it all blurs into one it's just my hospital days yeah. you're going to be able to watch that back and, and you've yeah. got your whole story basically yeah. Um, yeah. so I'm really glad that, and now I'm like why didn't I vlog more I should have vlogged yeah, like, yeah, yeah. before I was putting out content once a month or something but I was like I should have done it every week just to yeah. nice back on yeah no, it's really good it's really good and and if I mean there are a lot of people who want to do this right there are a lot of dogs who want to do this and mm -hmm. they all think oh, it'd be great to have a, a channel and put out videos but then something stops them and you know there's, there's doubts there but if someone did want to do it what how, what would you recommend to them if they're just starting out well firstly would you recommend they do it and then secondly if if they do what give, give us three tips that you do if you want to become a, a vlogger as a medic yeah um so recommend so if i would recommend if they should do it if they really want to just have like a creative outlet and they just want to connect with other people not worry about you know if they're going to make money from youtube and the numbers and everything because even now you know my numbers aren't that impressive they're getting there slowly but um you know it's not that great so if that's what you're worried about then it's probably not the best thing i wouldn't worry about things like cameras and stuff because even till now at this point i'm still recording on my phone um the biggest three tips i'd say is um find your niche so what do you want to do so do you want to do things like days in the life do you want to do about medical school based do you want to do like reaction videos do you want to do educational videos so really work out what you what you want your channel to be and focus on that niche before you sort of expand um the second i'd say is if, if it is something that you're thinking about to just share it with other people i mean i didn't share it with anyone at the time and it was i was mortified every time someone came up to me and like told me that um you know they'd come across my channel i actually had a medical student 
who told me they'd seen my videos and I was a bit like embarrassed but also excited so I was like oh yeah. what do you think um about my like videos I was like do you think it's it's fun or do you think it's cringe and she said she thought it was cringe <laughs> so I kind of I kind of wish I never asked her that question um and then the third one I'd say is just sort of experiment with different sort of like styles of recording and voiceovers and just remember that it's something creative and not to be like bothered about like I said numbers and that sort of stuff yeah yeah basically do it because you enjoy doing this kind of thing yeah. not for any other reason just because everyone else is dying to do it and it, that you think yeah. it's a good thing to do yeah. um or, or, or but you have or to them. keep up with it you know the yeah. audience want something regular so yeah. if I click onto your channel and you haven't uploaded for five months then I know you're probably just you know dropped off the face of YouTube oh you know? yeah you could uh, yeah well, you'll know this, you get it a lot. Like if I don't post for, for a day or two, people are like, are you okay? Like, is everything, is everything <laughs> it's all right? It's nice though. They're not just like, oh, unsubscribe because you're no longer there. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and that's why, you know, every, everyone who watches our stuff, I'm sure the same as you, you know, we're hugely grateful because they're giving up their time and there's so many other million distractions that could take them away from what they're watching. So if they can put in the time in to watch you for whatever reason, it's a super, super privileged thing, I think. Yeah, no, I'm grateful for ed everyone that subscribes and like every person that watches because I always think like as the numbers grow, it's sometimes difficult to imagine, you know, the people that are watching it. But I always imagine like a hall of a thousand people having watched this one video. And even though in YouTube numbers, a thousand is very, very small compared to the big YouTubers. Yeah. When I think about a thousand people in one space having opened my video and watched it, I think, yeah. I think that's just amazing. It's huge. Right, I want to I want to get some tips from you myself. So you've seen some of our videos. So give me give me three things that we can improve with our videos. And again, I want to write uh, these down so I, so I know what to do. <laughs> um, I don't know because your your channel is you're very regular, so your consistency is amazing, and um, that's something I'm, I'm working on now, which I've sort of changed and I've made a name. Um, I found that thumbnails are like a big thing, so one thing I looked into was that to avoid using sort of black and red and to use contrasting colors to YouTube because YouTube have like black and red. So you want to have things like Great. greens and blues and the thumbnail to really stand out when you're scrolling through. Um, I'm always like cautious about how long and short a video is. So if I will say, for example, I'm getting ready in the morning, I want a video to be long enough so that it will take up the time that I'm getting ready, but not too long that I'm kind of like having to stop the video halfway through. So anything sort of over 10 minutes, but less than 20 minutes is like ideal, I'd say. And then um, I can't think of it, the third one. This is a gold, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I probably need tips from you because don't two, you have, two's enough. I'm happy with two. Don't you have more subscribers on YouTube than I do? Yeah, we've been going a lot longer though. Yeah, I guess so. Fine. So maybe I should get. And plus, too. plus, people need things to pass exams, so it's an it's an it's an easier reason to subscribe. Oh, that's another thing as well. Make videos where people can watch over and over and over. So, like, you know, the most easy concept to think about is like exercise videos. Someone can open that and watch it every single day. Yeah. And over. So that's the, that's the kind of content that you do. So making content that's one shareable, people can watch it over and over, and it's sort of timeless as well. So if if somebody watched in two three years time, it's still sort of relevant to whatever yeah doing. yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and when you do medical videos particularly teaching then when you build up a catalog of x number 100 videos you've just got to stay on top of guidelines and updates and changes yeah. so i'm always going back and deleting stuff that's yeah. changed now and updating it and because people rely on this stuff sometimes and try and yeah. get the exam but yeah. um but no two super tips there i'm gonna go back and look at all my thumbs <laughs> okay get some greens I've, I've, <laughs> get some I've green. a week where i just changed all of the thumbnails on my youtube channel yeah we've done that a few times yeah i don't know if it's made any difference but we'll see no your, your thumbs are really good they, they stand out just like you say stand out really really well Thank um you. which is which is super and yeah the, the time thing is is really important and we have videos that range from 30 seconds up to about an hour depending on what the video is so mm -hmm. um and, and we try and do a range so that whatever time of day people are watching they've yeah, got something that they can watch there and then yeah. within 30 seconds or if they've got some time and they want to go into depth then we have that as well so you but the time you're absolutely right getting it right for the person who's watching mm -hmm. um is super key but look, yeah. i think that was re really useful and if anybody is going to do vlogging then check out Ezgi stuff definitely yeah, um <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely check it out obviously you, you know on insta if you're watching this anyway but but do have a look at the youtube channel the junior doctor yeah. i'm sure you'll find some amazing amazing stuff on there 
And for any of you guys who don't know us, we're Aurora Medical Education. We do a lot of med ed stuff for med school, PLAB, MSRA, MRCGP, and post CCT. So if you want to have a look at the website, please do check us out. We do a lot of content on a lot of streams. So hopefully you've come across us at some point before. But Ezgi, thank you so much for your time. I know you've got an eight, eight month old. Are they, is she asleep? She, yeah, I put her down to sleep at half seven, so I had enough she's, time to talk to her. She stayed asleep. Fantastic. Yeah. We've got two, and I can already hear one running around, so I'm going to put her <laughs> in bed now. She's at that stage where I can put her in the cot and she can't fight me, so she's going to eventually have to go to sleep. Oh, yeah, that will change sleep. soon. <laughs> that will change soon. And for anybody, guys, who's watching this on Insta, we always have a discount code. So if you use the coupon Aurora Insta 10, you get 10% off anything on the website. So please do use that if you are looking at getting one of our stuff. But Ezgi, thank you. It's been thank great. Hope you can do another video maybe at some point on on when you go back, how it's been getting yeah. back into it post maternity, balancing everything. I think that'd be really useful for a lot of people as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this has been super. And if I ever get questions now about vlogging, I'll just link them to this video. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Thank you, so thank you Ezgi. Take care. Bye. Bye.